Hello, class. All right, part two of chapter eight. Hopefully part one went well and you were really able to uh, hear everything okay. Uh, let's start with the muscles, muscles of the hip. Um, seven two joint muscles have one action at the hip and another at the knee. So based on those movement presentations, which is the, why I really like doing those, you get to see all the different uh, exercises that are involved in all the muscles of the lower extremity. Most people hate leg day. And the reason that people hate doing legs, they'll, they'll do upper extremities, but they hate legs because it takes a lot of effort to get these muscles to really fatigue. And it's not a very efficient uh, system, as you know, uh, based on first and third class levers. So you have to tax them and you have to be creative as far as your exercises are concerned to really build girth. Um, and then if people are weak, they'll start compensating somewhere else, either above or below. So you see a lot of people with low back pain after doing legs because they don't have the hip range of motion like we talked about in part one, and then they'll compensate either above or below. So uh, pay attention to these muscles. I think it will be um, definitely uh, helpful for you. If you look at muscles involved in the hip and pelvic girdle, motions depend largely on the direction of movement and position of the body in relation to the earth and gravitational forces. Body part that moves the most will be the part least stabilized. Okay, so you sacrifice mobility for stability. Example, when standing on both feet and contracting hip flexors, the trunk and the pelvis rotate anteriorly. We talked about that in part one. But when lying supine and contracting hip flexors, the thighs move forward into flexion on the stable pelvis. So try that. Hip flexors are used in moving thighs up toward the trunk. Now look at this good posture, the tilts. This is a neutral posture. The anterior pelvic tilt, we don't like that because you get tightness in your hip flexors. Uh, um, you get weakness in your glutes, weakness in your abs. Um, posterior pelvic tilt, this is no good here. This is the Robin Williams and this is more J-Lo, right? So J-Lo, Robin Williams. Hip extensors are used eccentrically when the pelvis and trunk move downward slowly on the femur. Are used concentrically when the trunk is raised on the femur, rising to a standing position. In the downward phase of a knee bend exercise, the movement at the hips and knees is flexion. Muscles primarily involved, hip and knee extensors in eccentric contraction. So this is very important for you to understand as well. So the hip joint and pelvic girdle muscles, what does primarily hip flexion? So on the exam too, I might ask which all the following muscles do hip flexion except. So you want to understand that in hip flexion, you have the iliopsoas, the pectineus, the rectus femoris, and the sartorius. Okay. The medial part, which does hip adduction, you've got the adductor brevis, adductor longus, adductor magnus, and then you've got this one called the gracilis. And gracias. <laughs> All right. And you got, and this is probably the posterior chain, probably the one that you want to focus on when you're doing exercises. You've got the glute max, you've got the biceps femoris, you've got the semi tendinosis, semi membranous, and then you've got the external rotators. So this is probably if you want to really develop a, a, a good posterior chain, these are the muscles that you want to find and to strengthen the most. All right, you've got hip abduction. This is another uh, uh, deficit that a lot of athletes have. So glute medius, glute minimus, external rotators, and the TFL. Now, remember we talked about the TFL a little bit. Here's the tensor fascia lata. Here's the muscle belly. When you foam roll, you're actually foam rolling this IT band, which is fascia. Now, research has shown that in order to even move this 1%, you need about 900 newton pounds of force. So that foam rolling you do is really doing nothing to lengthen it. But it can give you temporary relief so that you can go run or if you can do uh, exercise. So it's not bad for temporary relief, but it's not going to give you long-term relief. That's why you have to keep doing it. Uh, pelvic muscles acting on the hip joint. You've got the iliacus and then the psoas major. Okay. Uh, gluteal region extends and rotates the hip. So you've got glute max, glute medius, glute minimus, and the TFL. You've got six deep external rotators. You've got the piriformis. Obturator externus, obturator internus, gemelli superior, gemelli inferior, and the quadratus femoris. A lot of people uh, neglect these, the obturator externus, 
But these are like your rotator cuff. Remember we talked about your rotator cuff, which is our supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres major, I'm sorry, teres minor, and subscapularis. Well, these guys are the rotator cuff of the hip. Very important muscles. And when there's problems with this, you can cause all sorts of pain down the leg. So you really want to focus on these uh, little guys. Um, the thigh divided into three compartments by the intramuscular septa. Anterior compartment, primarily knee extensors. So you've got the rectus femoris, vastus medialis, vastus intermedius, vastus lateralis, and the sartorius. Posterior compartment, you've got the hamstring group, biceps femoris, semitendinosus, and semimembranosus. Medial <coughs> compartment, primary adductors, adductor brevis, adductor longus, adductor magnus, pectineus, and the gracilis. So what you want to do when you're studying for exam two and studying these, you want to put them in categories. Say, hey, what are the knee extensors? What are the hamstring group? What's the adductors? And put them all together in one category. The nerves, all hip and pelvic girdle muscles innervated from the lumbar and sacral plexus. Okay. The lumbar plexus formed by anterior rima of the spinal nerves. Uh, lower abdomen and the anterior medial portions of the lower extremities. So you want to know if there's damage to this, what will happen, okay? And you did a good job in your movement presentations as far as labeling all the, the nerves. And you can see that all those movements, we take it for granted, sumo squats, uh, curtsy, uh, lunge, planks. If there's just damage to one of those nerves, it can affect a, a lot of uh, muscles. Uh, Sacral plexus formed by the anterior rima of L4, L5, and S1. You've got the lumbar plexus, so look at this, the femoral nerve. The femoral nerve, so on exam two, I might ask, hey, the femoral nerve innervates which muscles? And that's iliopsoas, rectus femoris, vastus medialis, vastus intermedius, vastus lateralis, pectineus, and the sartorius. <laughs> Obturator nerve does all the adductors, brevis, longus, and magnus. Gracilis, obturator externus provides sensation to the medial thigh. So if a patient comes in and says, you know what, I can't feel anything on the inside of my thigh, then you might uh, sense damage to the obturator nerve. Superior gluteal nerve arises from L4, L5, and S1. And guess what? It innervates gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and tensor fascia latte. But the inferior gluteal nerve, which does L5, S1, is just gluteus max. So these, this is a great test question right here, the difference between superior gluteal nerve and inferior gluteal nerve. Branches from the sacral plexus, these get the gemellis, piriformis, S1, S2, gemelli superior, gemelli inferior, quadratus femoris. The sciatic nerve, you'll, you've heard of sciatica. Um, well, when this sciatic nerve gets irritated, you can have numbness and tingling going down the entire leg. And men are more common to get sciatic nerve because this little groove right here is smaller because men have a smaller pelvis than women. So it's more common in men to get sciatic nerve pain. The tibial division, you got semitendinosus, semimembranosus, biceps femoris, long head. Supply sensation for their posterior lateral lower leg. Uh, the common perineal or fibular division provides sensation to the anterior lateral lower leg. The iliopsoas muscle, okay, so you want to know what does it do? Well, it flexes the lumbar spine, um, lateral flexion of the lumbar spine, anterior pelvic rotation, flexion of the hip. Okay, why is this not working? All right, figured it out. So here's the trigger points right here that you can get right in here. So if somebody comes in with pain along their thigh right around here, that could be the iliopsoas there, right in here. So look at this, it's a big muscle, okay? Now the rectus femoris, which is flexion of the hip, extension of the knee, anterior pelvic rotation, okay? So that's your quads, right there, rectus femoris, okay? And then there you go. So people with trigger points of the rectus femoris, they may have pain up here where the X is, but they might refer to kneecap pain, and that would be muscle uh, referral patterns or trigger points here. Sartorius muscle, you look at this, 
flexion of the hip, flexion of the knee, external rotation, abduction, anterior pelvic rotation. Look at the sartorius right here, number 180. Okay. And then, but you can get all sorts of pain, uh, trigger points. You might get pain right in here, mid thigh, or along the side here. Okay. Pectineous muscle, flexion of the hip, adduction of the hip, external rotation of the hip. Okay. That's the adductus muscle, or, or I'm sorry, the pectineous muscle right here. Okay. And you might get some groin pain right in here. Okay. So it's very important to understand where these muscles can refer pains to all different areas. You've got the adductor brevis, okay? Adduction of the hip, external rotation as it adducts hips. Look at this. This guy's cut. Man. Uh, he's using a little bit of supplementation, I would think. All right? Look at the, the striations here, even on his legs. The striations. I mean, that is was pretty impressive. <clears throat> But look at this as far as the brevis and lung. They can refer pain into the entire leg. Adductor longus, adduction of the hip. Okay, adductor magnus, look at that. Okay. And you can get all sorts of pain. You can get pain, actually, a lot of times men will experience pain right into the prostate, and they might uh, experience pain um, actually into the rectum here, and they'll think, what's going on here? And they might think it's GI issues, but all the tests come back negative, and they realize it's just a muscle, and it can influence a lot of things. So these muscles, sometimes you want to make sure that you're, you want to see if they're referring pain to unusual places, and then have somebody look at them and palpate. This is why pelvic floor uh, has become really popular in women as well because they realize that muscles in the pelvic floor are causing all sorts of dysfunction as well. Um, adductor magnus, okay, abduction, I'm sorry, adduction of the hip, extra rotation, gracilis, semitendinosis, Look at that. Those are some hamstrings there, right? You got semitendinosis, semimembranosis, biceps, gastroc. Okay, but look at all this. Semitendinosis and semimembranosis can cause all sorts of pain back here. The biceps femoris can cause all sorts of pain back here. Okay. Semimembranosis, biceps, glute max. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's the glute max. Now that is impressive. Okay, if you had a glute max like this, you would have no low back pain or knee pain. That is impressive. But look at the glute max. Now that you're sitting on the computer all day, you can have all sorts of pain. So if you see an influx of pain in the, your your low back or your knee, or you can get out and stretch and strengthen your glutes. Glute medius. This is probably one of the uh, ones that. Uh, I think I mentioned we did some research on uh, if this is weak, you're going to have anterior knee pain, especially women because of the Q angle. So you've got abduction of the hip, lateral pelvic rotation, interrotation, um, anterior pelvic rotation, anterior fibers, external rotation, extension, and posterior pelvic rotation of the posterior fibers. So if you look at the difference between the glute med, it has anterior fibers and posterior fibers. Make sure you know what the anterior fibers do which do interrotation, flexion, and anterior pelvic rotation. But the posterior fibers, they do external rotation, extension, and posterior pelvic rotation. So very important to understand the difference between anterior fibers and posterior fibers, the glute need. So different exercises will target each one. There's the glute medius. Okay. But glute medius can cause all sorts of pain. Gluteus minimus, abduction of the hip, lateral pelvic rotation. Tensor fascia lata, what you love to foam roll right here. Abduction of the hip, flexion of the hip. Okay. 
lateral pelvic rotation, tendency to rotate hip internally as it flexes. Okay. The six deep lateral rotator muscles, you definitely want to know these guys. You know, piriformis, superior gemini, obturator internus, obturator externus, obturator quadratus, and <coughs> gemelli inferior. Hip flexion agonists, these are the ones that are flex the hip, so as iliac rectus femoris, pectineus, sartorius, TFL, hip extension, glute max, biceps, semi-tendinosis, semi-membranosis, hip abduction, TFL, glute max, glute minimus, internal rotation, gluteus medius, TFL, external rotation, glute max, and uh, six deep external rotators. All right, nice work. Hopefully that works. This should be enough to get you to study for the exam.